In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to give you some tips on using the tool called Magic Cut. Now the purpose of Magic Cut is to take video and match it to one or more audio clips. You are not editing audio when you're using this particular tool. There's another tool called Smart Fit for Duration that does allow you to edit audio to match video. But when you're using Magic Cut, remember that audio is king. It basically controls what you're doing here. So I have on track number one a video clip, rather boring, of vehicles going down a road. And let's assume that I want to use Magic Cut with this. Normally what I would do is I would take my audio track and drag it down to another timeline. I don't need to do that with this particular tool. With the video highlighted, I click on the Tools button above the timeline, then I simply choose Magic Cut. It will open up this panel on the left side. Now the panel has several features. First of all, if you're not sure what the terms are for the areas, you can click on the Information button at the top and it will give you a pretty decent description of what some of these items are and what they do. So it's a little bit of a, an embedded help screen right there. You also have two tabs in the top. You have one called Criteria, one called Duration. Let me click on Criteria. Now in Criteria, you have five sliders. Each of them has five different stops. They all start out in the middle. Now you can adjust these according to your video to prioritize maybe the duration of the scene. Maybe I want to prioritize moving objects. I don't want to prioritize scenes with people. So you can set these wherever you want in your video. So that gives you an option. I haven't detected exactly what kind of modifications the sliders make, but you can experiment using these in your own production. I'm going to focus mainly on the tab we'll, we'll work with the most, which is duration. So I click on that. And you notice what I have here, here's the original duration of my video. The next is the new duration. Now I found I have to be very careful and pay attention to this because I decide here how long I want it to be. Now I can start out as long as the original duration or anything less, but let me just take this and make it say four minutes and 30 seconds and zero frames. And so I'm four and a half minutes. Then I need to add some music. So I'm going to click on the icon to the lower right, which is Add Music, and that will take me to my file system. Now in my file system, I'll go to a place where I have some music. And let me try clicking a couple of these, holding the control key down, and click on Open. Now it took both of them. Now, if one of these were larger, I would get an error message. It would say, you don't have enough new duration for your music. And so it would only have pulled in the first title. Like if I try to add one now, it says the duration is longer than the target video. So I couldn't add anything else. So we either have to increase the new duration. Let me go five. Well, it's going to the maximum now. Let's see if it will let me do that now. I can add another one. I'll add a little, just a sound effect here. And that would give me all the duration I need. So you might run into some issues. You have to pay very close attention to the new duration. I'm going to take this one. I'll click on the garbage can to remove it. And we'll go back to our 430. Now the other thing you can do is you can say, I want to add up the time here. And you don't have to do it manually. When you go fit duration to background music, it will automatically compute the amount of minutes, seconds, and frames, and it will adjust it. Watch what happens when we click the button. Right now it says we have 5 minutes, 4 seconds, and 19 worth of music. So that will be the new duration of our video. Let me delete this one again and I'll load a shorter one here. And now if I click on fit background music to duration, now it's 3 minutes, 32 seconds, and 6 frames. So this does the math for you. Now I don't have to have the video exactly the same length as the audio tracks, although that's normally what I would do. But I can take this one and make this 55. 
And now what it will do is it will play my first piece of music, then it will play my second piece of music, and then it will take the first piece of music and add enough of it to fill up the time to match this duration that I have here. So again, it doesn't, it doesn't edit audio truly, but it will piece in a little piece when it gets to the end. If there's more audio that's needed, it will cycle back to the first track of audio. So that shows you a little bit about how these work together. Then you can apply transitions when possible. This is a check on or off. And if you check it on, you have three options. If it's turned off, we gray this out. If it's turned on, you can use a fade. You can use a random, anything in your transitions library. Or you can use anything you've marked as a favorite transition. So let's just do random for fun. And if you want to reorder the music, all you do is click on the track and you can click the up or down arrow and it will reorder the music that way. So there I have some variations. Now when you're done and you like what you've done so far, you have two options. Both of them send you to the AI tool and one is simply to preview and the other is to apply. The difference in apply is apply will actually replace track one with a modified track, my video track, and it will add the audio track to the timeline. Preview doesn't do that. It will just show you so you can see and hear what it will look like when we're done. Let's just try preview right now. I'll click on the button and it will analyze it. Now normally it will take a lot longer than this to analyze it, but I've analyzed this before so it went a lot faster. First time through it was about four minutes long. And then I have this that I can play and I can hear the audio, you hear it, uh, and then I can also see the transitions that are applied. And so I, I'm not actually seeing visually on the timeline when and how things are happening, but I can get a feel for this. Where are the transitions? What are they? And when is the has the audio been edited? I tend not to use the preview because it doesn't give me enough information. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to click on apply. Now you're going to see what happens when we apply these changes. Here are the edits to my video and here are all the transitions as well. So if I drag down, I'm going to see this happens to be my title, but here are my audio tracks. And you notice it didn't do anything with them. This one, uh, we have too much gain. I'm going to have to lower that. As you can see, I'll just lower that a bit manually. And it took the first piece of music and it copied it over here because I said, this is how long I want my new video to be. And so the video length will match. Now, if I look at these areas, you notice the duration of the first clip is 10 seconds. Then I have nine and 29 frames, 10, 10, 10, 10, nine, and here's one that's a little shorter, 8, 12. So I'm not sure exactly, but it tends to chop it into roughly 10 second breaks when it tries to match it. You'll have a few that are longer and a few that are shorter. The last one in this case is 624. That's one of the ways in which you can see how it begins to make this try to work in this situation. If I play this, I'm going to see the transitions in this window. And there's one, and you hear the audio. We're going to do the next one, and you're going to see and hear what happens when it breaks it up. So what it's done is it's taken the video track, changed it to the length I desired, and it's patched in the audio. Now you can take any of these transitions, go to your transition room and change them if you want. Or you can actually take the audio and you can edit that manually if you want. But it's done the, the big work of matching the two in terms of duration. Now, if you don't like what you've done, I just like Control Z. And now that will undo it. And I prefer that to preview. So now I'm back where I don't have any audio on the, on the track. I can go back into my uh, magic cut again. I can reload the audio files and decide what I want to do with this clip a second time around. But that's basically the power and the limitation of this particular tool. Remember, the audio is king. You wrap everything around the audio. 
You can shorten the video to match the audio and you can add transitions or not, whatever you like. Thank you.